grew up in this typical traditional Mexican family where we have mom, dad, and kids. And we, we grew up very united, especially, you know, with my dad. He was always taking care of us. But he had this way of being like, like volunteering and doing work for others. And he was always trying to help the community in different ways, uh, even though he had to sacrifice some family activities or things for his kids or his wife, my mom. But he always was working on that. to join my uh, family because he was my only family. So I got here to United States and started to leave, you know, my, my marriage. It lasted eight years, but since I got here, the very first day that I got here to United States, he became very violent. He was very aggressive with me. And on those eight years, we had two daughters, two beautiful daughters that I love with all my heart. And I always thought that I would do anything possible to give them the better life that we could have. One day, things became very violent between my husband and me. Uh, we started to argue for, I can't even remember exactly what was the issue that day, but uh, he almost killed me. He was um, choking me. He grabbed me from the neck and I thought I was gonna die. The way he was holding me, I thought I was losing my life. Um, when I was fainting, I just turned and I saw on my side that my two daughters were looking at, at me. I became really strong I don't know from where I got strained. So I just hold the baby and I grab the other one and I walk out of the house. I basically escape. And I started walking on the street. I started to walk and I found this police officer. He asked me if I was okay. And he answered himself, he's like, I guess not, right? I couldn't talk because of the way my former husband grabbed me the neck. He turned and looked at my daughters and he asked, uh, what's happening? And my daughter said, my dad was killing my mom. And the officer said, did he do that in front of you guys? And she says, yeah. So he asked me if I wanted to make like a police report. And I, I said, you know what? I, I don't want anything because I know that you're going to deport me and I'm gonna be without my daughters. 
And he's like, who said that? And I'm like, my husband. And he's like, that is not true. You want us to help you? And I say, yes. He said, um, so they, they started to file that police report and everything, and he sent me home. When I got there, another police officer came, and he said, um, your husband is going to be released. I got very scared, and I thought if he comes back, he's going to kill me for sure. So I just grabbed a bag of clothes. I took my baby and my other daughter, and I left. I decided to leave my house and I didn't have a place to stay. I didn't know where to go or who to look for. And walking on the street, I found this person and he asked me about my family and I told him and I didn't have anyone. He asked me if I knew a place or where to stay and I said, no, I don't have anything. I don't have anyone and he says, so, that means you're homeless, and I'm like, more likely, yes, I am. And he sent me to Rio Grande. So I started walking a couple of blocks from where I was, and I found this nice building. When I saw it, I thought it wasn't really bad. After all, well, this is United States. I thought it was like a fancy shelter or a fancy place to stay for people like me on my situation, on my condition. So I realized that it wasn't there. I started walking and I got to this street. This is Rio Grande. This is the street where that guy made reference to. He referred to, to this place. So I got here and people around me told me that the shelter was there that since I had a baby, I should apply for a room and I should apply for a place to stay in there. So I went inside and the person there, the, the receptionist asked me for an ID and I didn't have anything with me and she asked me for a, a checkup, a medical examination to see if I had a disease or something contagious. Uh, since I didn't have anything, she stated that she had to deny me the room. I never felt so undocumented than that moment. I think it's one of the hardest moments in my life, a dark part on my soul that is really hard for me to remember. So I got out of there and I was completely lost. I didn't know where to go. And I just stayed here. This was my home. And when I see it, it's still home for me. I found that corner over there. And I stayed here for days. The people around here, around me, here on the street were protective. They were protecting me and they were telling me what to do. They, they were kind of like orienting me where to go.
after the days went by there at the corner, I started to get really worried about my daughter's safety. I think it was one of the most important things to uh, take care of. And I kind of like remember that it was a consulate that could help me as a Mexican in a foreign country. And I went to look for them. Uh, after I found them, I told them my situation and they sent me to this shelter for domestic violence victims. And it was really, really nice because the social workers and the advocates were very nice with us. They were really helpful. They started to work in my case. And at the same time, I was working on my own situation so I could get out of it. Um, they enrolled us in different activities and one of those activities was being part of a support group. On this support group I started to make a lot of friends because it was every week but Every week was different people attending to that group. And the way it was working is we used to talk about our personal situation or a certain problem. And the rest of the group were giving you ideas on what to do. So I learned a lot about resources and how to handle my case, what to do, where to go meeting more and more people every time. And by learning what I did is all that knowledge that I was acquiring, it helped, uh, it helped me to, to give help to others. I was able to orient other people and I was feeling so, so proud of the help that I was able to, to provide to others. Even we have difficulty or hard circumstances to go through, I think that there is always a chance for a change. When we accept the challenge, when we meet people that is there for us, and when we give to ourselves the opportunity to do new stuff. The most important thing is to not lose faith, because there is always hope for a change.